guys thanks for checking out quick sessions podcast my name is garrett terrio and i know it's been a while but we've been moving into the new gym everything's kind of coming together but of course podcasting new baby all that stuff has taken a back seat but today we're going to talk about something not necessarily in the gym fitness base just this kind of just subject i'm into don't know me which you know a lot of you don't i am big on the mma the boxing all the combat sports i love all that stuff and one of the most popular forms of this combat sport is jiu-jitsu now jiu-jitsu is in mixed martial arts and it's also its own thing which is still a big deal tons of tournaments around and it's similar to a wrestling tournament you know you have points and there's you know you can submit people where in wrestling you pin somebody all that kind of stuff but the thing that doesn't get talked about is this other discipline that came out of brazil with jiu-jitsu it was called luta livre and what that is essentially is a type of wrestling that they do there so it's the if jiu-jitsu is defensive fighting then luta livre is offensive fighting just like wrestling is offensively geared and like i said while this doesn't have anything to do with going in the gym and lifting weights you know these guys clearly train they're clearly in gyms they're clearly running all that kind of stuff you know the history of it is kind of interesting especially a lot of people don't know about this luta livre it was it never became as big of a deal and as mainstream as jiu-jitsu and some of that i'll get into but the main reason is because the the gracies the last name the gracies you've heard of Royce gracie helio gracie this family of jiu-jitsu practitioners are so famous throughout the world anyone that trains with them is already considered you know given the benefit of the doubt i should say as far as being a good tactician of jiu-jitsu so this luta livre interests me because i've never heard of it and it seems that at least earlier you know within the last hundred years it was a rival to jiu-jitsu it was the the yin to the yang so to say and it started in the late 20s and this guy tattoo that's just the name they called him and he was the original practitioner of this catch wrestling type of discipline called luta livre and the thing that really put it on the map is he ran into this guy jorge gracie and they had a fight and he won and one thing you'll know if you keep up with the gracies they are always complaining so of course they contested the fight said it wasn't fair all that stuff but anyway the guy won and then this luta livre kind of grew right jiu-jitsu wasn't the main show in town and now the gracies weren't the main show in town in brazil and i can't emphasize this enough the gracies are everything to the sport of jiu-jitsu so the fact that you know this this wrestling style in brazil is the the rival to the the gracies in itself is very interesting and ultimately the gracies prevail they they're just they're bigger they're more mainstream they started fighting internationally more so than just in brazil so it grew and then jiu-jitsu became more popular and luta livre while it's still practice has never become that big of a deal and so you could say marketing is the reason uh you could say jiu-jitsu was just more effective than wrestling at the time because with jiu-jitsu small guys can take down big guys maybe not today I'm sure the best guys can still do it today, but now everybody's studied it. They know how to combat it. So one little story about this, it kind of it's kind of a crazy story, and it's just one of them. There was about ten I was reading or watching videos on, and you may recognize a couple names on this. But these these two disciplines, this Gracie Academy and these these followers of Tattoo, this Luta Livre camp, they were like little gangs almost. You know, they would just meet up in the streets and have fights. And I guess that counted on their records because they they talked about it and they would ambush each other in gyms. So it's real funny. It's this real kind of barbaric, old school fighting, right? Because there's no money in this at the time. Even today, there's not that much money in jiu-jitsu in Brazil. But it's just one of those things that, I mean, imagine one gym just going to another gym looking to start a fight. You know, a little little gang war. So anyway, the, the, the one that caught my eye that kind of sums up this whole relationship of these two martial art disciplines is uh, this guy Hugo Duarte. And he was in the camp of the Luta Livre. So what happened essentially was this guy Marcus Rua, which if you're a UFC fan, you know who he is. He won, I think it was UFC 3 or 7 or something. He was a big deal. Well, one of the Gracies, Ricks and Gracie, you know, grabbed the squad and went to the gym to fight. And he wanted to do it right there behind closed doors, uh, which is just kind of how it happened. Well, Rua said, I'm, I'm in nowhere near fight shape. You know, let me go through a fight camp and we'll do it. And Rua's a big star at this point. He's They were calling him the best. 
And I think he was going to fight the number one jiu-jitsu guy anyway in a few months. So he had to, he was just about to start his camp and all that. And the Gracie, Rickson Gracie says, no, we're not going to do it. And then Helio Gracie, which if you're a, a student of MMA, you know who he is. He's the godfather of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's basically saying everybody's scared. No one wants to fight Rickson. And this guy, Hugo Dorte, says, you know, sign me up. So the Gracies end up leaving that day, even after Hugo said, you know, I'll take that. And the problem was it started making it to the streets of Brazil that, hey, this guy, Hugo Dorte, called out Ricks and Gracie and nothing happened. So now the Gracies, they have pride, right? They don't want to be seen as, as cowards or scared or anything. And Ricks and Gracie's awesome at the time. He, he's the man. So to be called a coward is just so disrespectful to him because he's already proven himself. So what he does, just to make sure that, I guess, a Hugo can't prepare, but maybe just to make sure he can't back out of a fight, he finds out Hugo Duarte is at the beach. Pepe Beach is what they call it. And this really wasn't that long ago. This is in the late 80s. So the fact that this street fighting is still kind of going on at this time is is funny. I mean, it's it's comical nowadays looking, you know, what are y'all a bunch of kids? Like, y'all grown-ups. Y'all just going around trying to have martial arts fights. Well, anyway, Ricks and Gracie shows up to the beach, and they start fighting. They, they start their match, and people are surrounding it and, and all that. And Ricks and Gracie ends up winning, right? Because, like I said, he's the best. I don't remember his record, but I think he's just undefeated. No one can mess with him. Well, Hugo, you know, they're going clean up in the ocean. So it's kind of civil after, even though these it's almost like a little gang fight that turns into a one-on-one -on -one fight. The They go wash up, and Hugo says, you know, I'm not okay with this result. I want the rematch. And essentially, Ricks and Gracie is saying, no, I'm not. I'm me leaving to go to America to fight in the UFC, I'm guessing, is, is what his objective was. So what happens is just like the Gracies did, Hugo gets the whole squad from the Luta Livre gym, 60, 70 people, and they're strapped too. They got bats, they got guns, they got everything, and they show up to the Gracie training facility. So while they're doing this, Ricks and Gracie's getting tipped off like, hey, they're going ambush the gym. Well, the only person there when they get there is Helio Gracie, and this guy's about 80 years old at this point. So he goes and he stands up to this mob with, you know, automatic rifles and all that. And, you know, Hugo talks about it. He's like, yeah, it was it was the most biggest show of manhood I've ever seen. You know, this 80 year old guy just getting in the middle, telling him what's what, probably telling him to stop being some jerks. You know, you'll get your fight. So Rickson shows up and he's, I'm sure, very pissed. And then he beats Hugo Duarte even quicker this time. So then, you know, Duarte says, fine, and, you know, you won, yada, yada. So with this, you know, everybody sees the fights. So well, now more people want to fight. But luckily, you know, cops show up. They break it up. So, you know, some of the, the fighting was spared, even though it was, it was it's the most street fighting but organized. If you ever watch, like, the Kimbo Slice YouTubes where they go in someone's backyard and the guys fight and then it's fine after that. It's not that they don't like each other. It's just that street fighting. And if you've never seen it on YouTube, go check it out. It is entertaining because it's, it's like when you were in school. You're in eighth grade and two kids start fighting. Everybody just you know, backs away. Now in eighth grade, you don't like the other person. And these guys may not like each other. There is at least a respect to where they can talk after the fight, after there's a winner. And it just is what it is. You know, there's no payback coming, right? There might be a rematch, but it's not like they're going to jump you in the alley next chance they get. So I thought that was a neat story to kind of give you the background on not only Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, but also this, this wrestling style that was in Brazil at the time, Luta Livre. There's a couple practitioners of it, but it's it's kind of like karate. It's it's kind of going by the wayside for, you know, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, are probably the two dominant disciplines in mixed martial arts, but also kickboxing, Muay Thai, things like that. So it's on the back burner. It still gets practiced in Brazil and maybe some places around here in the United States also, but it's it's wrestling, right? Just It's, it's catch wrestling. So that's about it. I know it's a little different, but I just thought it was a cool story, kind of an origin story that I wanted to share. Sorry it's been so long, but guys, thanks for checking out Quick Sessions Podcast. Check us out on the website, quicksessionspodcast.com, Instagram, Facebook. You can download us on Spotify, Apple Pod Center, iHeartRadio, Google Play Store, you name it. Appreciate the support, and I'll see you guys next time.